Well, in today's Don't Trash Our Treasure, it is back, uh, actually a somber anniversary for Biscayne Bay. It was this time last year, you may remember, when the Bay experienced its first ever massive fish kill, where more than 27,000 fish and marine animals from 56 different species died in the Northern Bay. And while we know it was caused by a lack of oxygen in the water due to decades of pollution, one year later, are we any closer to restoring our most precious natural resource? It's the first week of August and Biscayne Bay is breathing <sighs> for now. It is much better this year than where it was last year right now. Dr. Todd Kral is the executive director of FIU's Institute of Environment and one of the leading scientists urgently working to try and save Biscayne Bay. It didn't die, right? But it's on respiration. <laughs> It was this time last year when the Northern Bay experienced an unprecedented catastrophic event. And all of a sudden we just, we were looking around us and we realized that we were in a sea of dead fish. For five days from North Miami to Virginia Key, thousands of dead fish and other marine animals began washing up on the shores or were seen floating dead on the water while others gasped for breath. It was exactly what scientists had been warning about for years. Too many land-based pollutants flowing freely into the bay, killing meadows of seagrass, allowing algae to bloom and take over, depleting the water of oxygen. The oxygen levels drop to one, and when that happens, things suffocate. So basically what they saw were suffocating fish. This is crazy, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And to see sort of the worst case scenario happening before our eyes was devastating for us. We had been working so hard um, to prevent this moment. Rachel Silverstein is the executive director of Miami Waterkeeper, the clean water watchdog organization that was one of the first to mobilize, test the water and respond. It's become really clear that North Biscayne Bay wasn't having enough monitoring. And so when the fish kill happened, we were almost blind. That was then, this is now. This morning at 5.30, temperature 24, dissolved oxygen was 0 0.8. Since last year's fish kill, FIU's Institute of Environment has two research buoys permanently deployed in the North Bay, sending data back in real time via text messages. So I get a text from the buoy if it's, if it's reading low oxygen. It is a 24-7, seven days a week operation. Buoy number one is stationed near the outfall of the Biscayne Canal, one of the low oxygen hotspots last year. This buoy is doing great. This is when we've only had three days in the last 45 days where oxygen has even sagged a little bit. But the buoy near the outfall of the Little River is a different story. So virtually every morning for the last 30 days, I've gotten a text about 4 a.m. that says the oxygen in the Little, little River has dropped down to around three milligrams per liter. Is it any wonder? These images of the Little River were sent to us by a local 10 viewer just two weeks ago. Islands of floating garbage, literally just the tip of this deadly iceberg of trash. It's all the pollutants in the water you can't see that are the real killers. Chemicals, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, fertilizers, herbicides, things like that that are getting into the water that are invisible to us. South Florida Water Management District was notified and within two days scooped up all the solid trash and debris near the water control structure off Northeast 82nd Street. In a statement to Local 10, the district responded in part, quote, the district manages about 2,200 miles worth of canals and we have stepped up the rounds in the Little River where we station a vessel now and are performing weekly cleanouts to ensure the debris does not collect when summer rains frequently fall. Sadly, it took a fish kill to wake everybody up. Irela Begay is Miami-Dade County's newly appointed Chief Bay Officer charged with putting together a comprehensive management plan to restore the watershed. We're looking at that Little River area as a place to start. And they're starting with $20 million, 10 million recently granted by the state, which the county was able to match. With those $20 million, we're actually focusing on the hot spots first. So where are the hardest hit nutrient pollution levels? It is clear there is big trouble in the Little River. I think that's the highest volume of bad water coming in right now yeah. for the North Bay. Bad water from all the septic and sewer leaks and fertilizer and storm drain runoff and all this garbage. And while water management must regularly release this water into the bay after heavy rains to prevent neighborhoods from flooding, 
shouldn't that water be clean first? They do have the purview to look close, more closely at water quality and come up with a decision tree where they might not open the gate to this one to let the water into the bay because the water quality is low, right? And they'll do it over here instead. But until we fix our pollution and infrastructure problems, it is a dangerous game of beat the clock. Water management says it is working with the county to address the water quality issues plaguing Little River and have identified more hot spots from industrial businesses upstream in Hialeah and Opalaka. Meanwhile, the county is working on transitioning vulnerable septic tanks near the river to sewer lines and also upgrading aging infrastructure in that area. We'll take a closer look at that next week. For more info, click on the Don't Trash Our Treasure tab on local10.com.